One of the most misunderstood muscles in the human body is the quadratus lumborum, or the QL. And the QL is always implicated in back pain, particularly SI joint pain and just lower back pain in general. The problem is when people fixate on the QL, they're missing the bigger picture. The quadratus lumborum does not operate individually. It is part of a bigger complex of muscles that surround the pelvis and of the abdominals and more importantly of the diaphragm. So at the end of this video, I'm going to show a QL inhibition technique. And inhibition is different than a stretch. Stretching is dumb. It's not dumb in the sense that you shouldn't do. It's dumb to stretch. It's, it's dumb in the sense that it doesn't teach the brain anything. There's no regulatory feedback to that brain from the QL and from the larger system in general. Inhibition is a neurological process. The brain learns something new. So to inhibit or turn off inappropriate overactivity of a QL, you need to have a neurological event. The brain needs to learn and understand why it needs to stop using that QL inappropriately because that's, what ha what's, what, that's what's happening. And it's happening primarily for breathing reasons. The one muscle of primary importance that you have to consider along with the QL is the psoas muscle. And it's because they share a common origin point. Now there is no real origin and insertion. We just have insertion points. Uh, the brain does not distinguish between what's the origin and what's the insertion. It's just insertion. Now, the, Q, the QL and the diaphragm, uh, the QL and the psoas share insertion points on lumbar vertebrae one through, well, I don't have them on here because the skeleton doesn't have it, but one through four. So basically at the bottom, and you can see in the picture, in this diagram, that there's, you can see how it would be kind of connecting in the same area. And then the QL attaches to the top of the ilium on each side. So you have two, remember. The psoas also, because it's on the, the lumbar spine, it comes through the pelvis and attaches to the femur in the front. Because they both act on these lower lumbar vertebrae, the transverse processes, so these edges here of the lower vertebrae, and then the QL also attaches to the bottom floating rib, the 12th rib. This is not an accurate model. It doesn't have the, the, the fake, the false ribs as they call them, but the QL also attaches to the bottom most, the 12th rib. And because of that, they work in conjunction. But not only that, so you can't simply try to stretch a QL without taking into account what the psoas is doing. But there is a bigger picture that people are still missing. If you're still with me in this video, could you like the video or comment or share it or subscribe? It would help quite a bit. Thanks. Now, as you see here, I placed a picture of the right diaphragm and the left diaphragm on top of the QL and psoas and iliacus and pelvic floor area. So that's what's on top. And you'll notice that the right diaphragm and the left diaphragm are not the same size. And this is the big picture. Because of that bigger right diaphragm, the muscular forces acting upon the lumbar spine, which the QL and the psoas attach to, are not equal on both sides. There's greater forces coming from the right diaphragm on the lumbar spine than there is on the left side. And this is the reason we have this thing called the left AIC pattern that shows up constantly, where the left side of the pelvis is forward, the right side is back, and the, the entire pelvis is oriented to the right along with the lumbar spine. That means that the QLs on each side and the psoas muscles on each side and the iliacus on each side and the pelvic floor muscles on each side are not doing the same exact thing. If we go back to the previous diagram, you'll see I wrote inhaled state decompressed for the left side and exhaled state compressed on the right side. So what you're going to see happen, and hopefully the views aren't too confusing, what happens in this left AIC pattern is when that pelvis comes forward on the left and back on the right and orients the pelvis to the right and the lumbar spine to the right, that shifts our body weight over to the right side. It will also bring the rib cage down on the right side. This is what posture restoration calls the left AIC right BC pattern. 
in this position, the right side of the rib cage, the right side of the rib cage, meaning the right abdominal wall, the right intercostals are in a state of compression. They're in a state of exhalation. So everything on the right side is being compressed and tightened. Everything on the left side is being pulled apart and forward into a state of extension. They are in an inhaled state. So if you take a breath in, that's what you're in on the left side. On the right side, you're in a state of exhalation. Inhalation on the left, air goes up into the left chest. Exhalation on the right, you're getting air out on the right side. So we have an issue of right-sided lean or body weight that PRI calls left AIC, right BC pattern, which means the QLs on each side, along with the psoases on both sides and the iliacus on both sides and the pelvic diaphragm on both sides, and then the right diaphragm and the left diaphragm are not in the same states. You can't approach them the same exact way. You have to take into account what this left psoas is doing. The left psoas is conspiring with the right QL to bring the pelvis forward on the left and orient the entire body to the right. So if you're trying to simply stretch a QL muscle, that's meaningless to the brain because you have all this other musculature that is positioning our body. It's a position issue. That is positioning our pelvis to the right, our body weight to the right, our rib cage down on the right, which is creating a different state of being on both sides. So you simply can't just stretch the QL and hope that everything will, will resolve. You have to change this situation. You have to be able to inhibit the left psoas, turn it off, by bringing the pelvis to the left, opening up the right side with air, and compressing the left side. So the left side has to compress, and the right side has to decompress with the pelvis turning to the left, because you are living compressed on the right, pelvis turned to the right, and this is how we're existing. And that's when you see the left shoulder higher than the right. This is everything that PRI talks about. If you don't know what PRI is, this, you'll have to watch my, my whole channel is about PRI. But this patterned position of the body, of the pelvis and the rib cage, and remember the diaphragms, this is a breathing issue. If you're not diaphragmatically breathing with both diaphragms, your QL on the right is gonna be overactive as an exhaler. And it's working with the right abs to do that, the right internal obliques in particular. So the right internal obliques and the right QL are working as exhalation muscles. On the left side, you have no left internal obliques and your left QL is not being used appropriately for exhalation. It's stuck in a state of inhalation. So the left side has to close and PRI it's called the left COA. And that is the technique that I'm going to show. When someone lies down on my table, you'll see when they lie on their left side, the right side is falling back. This person is falling backwards. When they lie on their right side, they are not falling backwards. That's just an example of someone, well, in that position, in the picture on the left, that individual will have an overactive QL on the right side, along with the overactive right diaphragm, which is pulling their body back on the right. That's why you see this individual kind of falling back on the right. That doesn't happen on the opposite side. And this is the difference between someone who has an overactive right diaphragm, an overactive right abdominal wall, an overactive right QL before the session starts. And then afterwards, he lies down. He's perfectly even. We inhibited. We, we, we stretched, if you want to call it stretch, but that's not really what it is. It's inhi inhibition. We taught that individual's brain to get their pelvis to the left, to compress the left side, and open up the right side with air, which is what turns off the QL on the right side and turns on the QL appropriately on the left side. You don't have to strengthen the left side. You need to be able to exhale and get your left ZOA, your left abs on the left side. That's what you need to do for the left QL. And that's the result at the end of the session. So if you look at this position that I'm lying in, uh, I'm lying on my left side. My right side is being elongated. My right leg is moving away from the right shoulder. Everything on the left side is being shortened, compressed. Remember, the right side needs to decompress and lengthen. The left side needs to compress and shorten in order to get your body on the left side and open up the right side with air. So in the video, I just switched directions, so I'm facing you. And what you're gonna see is that I bring my right hip forward. There I go, I bring my right hip forward. And then I reach with that right leg and I just elongated the entire right side of my body, 
and then I'm just breathing into the right side of the rib cage while my left side stays compressed. My left shoulder and my left hip are closer together, and I'm breathing into that right side of my rib cage, and my right leg is higher than my right hip. So that is a right QL inhibition technique, a neurological event. So your brain is associating elongation of the right side. It is associating it with compression of the left side and the left ZOA. So you're breathing with your left diaphragm and the left diaphragm is putting air into the right side of the chest. So that is a neurological event because the brain is now learning how to use the body in a different position so that it can turn off the inappropriate activity. That's why inhibition, an inhibitory technique, a PRI inhibitory technique, is so much different than a meaningless stretch because a stretch, your brain doesn't learn anything. You can stretch, but it's, it's meaningless to your brain. And that's the big difference. And that's what people are missing. This also inhibits the psoas on the left side. Now, there's a bunch of caveats to this. Uh, that is not a simple, it seems simple, but some people won't be able to do it because of the following reasons. Uh, some people may be too unstable in, in their left hip. They may, they may need to work on building, you know, using their left hamstring first, their left adductor first. Uh, they, meet, they may need to learn how to shift their pelvis to the left first before they can start to open up the right side of the rib cage. It's never just one side or the other. That's the other thing you have to remember. Both sides empower the other side. Right side has to function, left side has to function, and when they're both functioning optimally, they allow the other side to function optimally. So some people are just too tight in other areas of their body for this to work appropriately. So it may work for you, it may not work per perfectly for you because uh, you might be too tight in other areas. That's why with PRI, everything is very individual, specific to the individual. You can find this technique on the PRI website. That's why I'm actually showing it because it's freely available. If you look at their webinar on breathing in COVID times, it's part, it's there. There's other techniques also. So, but just realize just because it seems easy, a lot of people won't be able to do it. If they have overactivity of the right SCM or this TMCC pattern that we talk about in PRI, might not work. Uh, they simply, people might just not do the technique correctly. They might not be in the right position. So there's a lot of intricacies and subtleties to these techniques. Oh, the other thing is you have to have pillows underneath your head to keep your neck bent to the right. It has to, if the neck is bent to the left, it's not going to work because this right SCM will be overactive in that position. To turn that SCM off, you have to lift that left, the side, the head up on the left side so that you're not overusing that right SCM. So without those towels, that technique will probably not work. So a towels or a pillow to keep that side, that neck side bent to the right along, as you're getting left abs and reaching with that right leg. So all these things have to come together to produce the outcome that we're looking for. So this, this technique is purely inhibitory. It's not very active. So what you may wanna do if you use this technique is then pair it with a uh, activities that will strengthen the musculature on the left side, the left hamstring. So any 90-90 techniques for the left hamstring, the sideline adductor pullbacks where you're learning to use your left inner thigh, anything that's using the left hip musculature, you could, after you do this, you could use the left hip musculature to complement this technique. Because getting the right side to open up is again, kind of meaningless unless you're pairing it with a left side that is becoming more active because that's what we need to do. We have to get off our right side and get onto our left side and then go back and forth. But the biggest challenge is getting off the right side and getting the process started of reincorporating your left hip musculature into your life.